um, I thought today we'd um, look at, I spoke about before my uh, different tools um, for tooling and for making patterns in the um, in the leather. So I thought I'd just do, have a look at some of the different ones you can use and do a bit of a project. Um, introduce each of them. So um, I'll start off with a few of them. Um, basic ones. I got a basic pack once, so um, I'll just go through those basic ones. And what I thought I might do is I've got a bit of a, a flower design there. I thought I'd actually use that to see what you can do or show you what you can do with the different shapes in each of the tools. So uh, probably the first thing we need to do is, um, as I did with the, the logo, is pull that in. And to do that we need to uh, first wet our, um, our leather just a bit and just going to etch that in. I'm going to use um, the edge of my stylus here, just as a, which is a very basic pattern. Um, try and get my hands out of the way, just to put that in there. Just going around the lines, as we did with the logo. I'm going to do this fairly quickly because we have seen this before when I did the logo. It's a bit rough. Oop, moved a bit. So we got the basic idea on there, and then uh, as we did last time, we'll get my uh, swivel knife out and cut that in. One thing I didn't talk about when uh, before with um, the swivel knife and the blades and things like that, um, we do need to keep them fairly sharp, and so we use what's called jeweler's. Um, paste or jewel's resin on just a little piece of leather and just like you might have seen old day um, barbers stropping their their blades it's a fairly similar system so uh, just basically run it along at an angle you might see some black coming off which is polishing off all right turn it over to the other side and just to keep it a little bit sharper All done. All right, let's go back to the actual piece. Place that back. And we're just going to tool that design real quick. So, using the, the tool again, on a bit of an angle, finger in the top, and just tracing around those lines. I normally use the, put the, the design down so I can. If, if it hasn't really taken very well, you can follow along and see what it's supposed to look like. So just quickly, tooling that in, well, cutting that in. Just a basic design. And then we'll go through each of the tools, um, introduce them, um, look at the, the marks that they make, and then we'll look at how we can use those marks. To emphasize the patterns.
with this one here, what I might do, instead of actually carving it out, I'm just going to put a little series of dots around, just to emphasise where it is, because we'll, I'll show you why a bit later on. Okay, so basically there it is. All carved in. So now let's look, introduce some of these tools and see how we can use them. Um, so let's start off, I'll put our silver knife away. Try and get a clean desk, I never do, but always try. So probably the first one I wanted to use is the one I used before. It's actually called a, um, uh, a okay, one I want to use before. Um, it's actually called a beveler. It's the one I used uh, for beveling. You see, it's on a, like a little ski ramp. Um, one side is fairly flat. Um, and so basically the whole idea of the beveler, I'll, I'll show you the sort of mark it makes. Um, hitting it straight down with my little mallet. You can see it actually puts on one side the uh, an indent and it sort of tapers up. So it's normally used for going around the edges of patterns like this one. And just giving it a crisp edge. It's used to bring parts of the uh, design out and flatten others, it's just to give us a 3D effect. You can sort of see there it's raising the leaf up or the petal up. Just a little. Might help if I put a bit of uh, marble underneath. There we go, that's much better. Knew there was something missing. Just needs the solid background there. Alright, so I'll continue on doing that one. And uh, we'll see what happens. So you can see I've gone around the outside there. Um, mainly with this flat one for the outside Oop, let's go that way and done all the outside edges here and I've used another couple they're also um, the same sort of thing but you notice they actually have maybe a pattern on them that one's got a bit of a shading pattern Get it to focus. Oh. And that one's got a bit of a soft. So I've sort of on the inside there um, done a bit of. Um, so it sort of <coughs> brings the, the image out. So let's put those away. That was our bevelers. So bevelers done. Next thing I want to actually introduce you to is what's called a camouflage tool. Um, it's a little bit like a croissant actually, um, it's probably the best one. I can get the focus, or into this one, it's called a dribbling tool. And the sort of uh, shape that this one makes, uh, we'll pop it on here, give it a whack. Sort of like a, a bit of a shell shape. And with this one, you can actually do it straight on like I just did. Or, do it to the left or to the right. 
and get a flat, deeper curve and things. So on our, on our flower, I was thinking um, <coughs> it might be nice to, you know, maybe put a little bit of a mis um, mark over here using the, let's get my, thing there and maybe even um, starting off on the edge here just using the edge on an angle of the camouflage just give it a bit of a pattern around the edge there So we're giving a bit of a, a pattern. So that's the camouflage tool. Um, I do have a few different sizes uh, for camouflage tools. Uh, big ones, small ones, tinier ones. So there's a plethora of things you can do with them, but for this project, a camouflage tool. Next I want to introduce you to um, probably, it's called a, a pear shaped shader. It's called a pear shaped shader because it's pear shaped and it's helped for shading backgrounds and things like that. We can use this for a number of different things. Um, when you hit it, you hit it straight on, it's using a straight up, up and down. Or you can, it's got a heel and a toe. The heel is obviously for bigger areas and you can angle it back and just get a small part or if you've got finer areas just use the toe so it's smaller so depending on the shape that you want to use um, you can actually use the pear shaped shader um, to do a number of things there's also a thing called walking um, walking the tool where you hit it and then you move on a little bit and hit it again and hit it again so you're sort of walking along and that's what I'm going to do for these flowers here um, in the petals um, on the, the thing if I start off with the, the fat end down one end and give it a bit of a, a bash and then sort of walk it around a bit it gives the leaf itself more of a leaf like effect and I'll do it on the bottom one as well. And maybe even these top ones here. I say leap, I mean pedal. But you know what I mean. And even in the stem here, maybe I can follow around there a bit and do a bit of walking. This one's got a pattern. There's also one I've got which is a bit smoother. Um, so maybe I can go over this one at the bottom here with a smooth one to give it a different sort of texture. You get the idea. Okay. So we're sort of getting a, a pattern there on the uh, on the piece itself. All right. So the bevel has gone around the edges. We've got the pear shaped shader. Uh, what else can I introduce you to? Uh, what else in my book? All right, next one I want to see is... This one's called a veiner. Um, got an interesting shape to it. And the sort of shapes that this one makes. Um, we've got a different, couple of different sizes here. But almost like bat wings, I reckon. Um, a bit of a pattern on the side there. 
uh, I'll smooth one side pattern in the middle and vein is uh, again you just use for accenting so how we use the camouflage around the side of this one I might want to use the veiner again starting at a certain point using it on an angle just to get following around the curv curvature or what would be the curvature of that um, stem you can probably even go all the way around just keeping the, the angle as it goes around the curve obviously the angle is going to get tighter and less of it's going to be there just sitting gently on this far end more you sort of see this the effect that's giving it there <coughs> so that's our veiner the next one um, well I'll introduce you to is what's called a cedar um, this is called a cedar because it, a lot of the time it's used for um, decorating accents or or seeding in flowers and things so so it takes its name. Again, I've got a couple of different sizes. I've got a small one there, larger one. Um, let's get a slightly larger one, just just so we can actually see what it's doing. And so basically, just finding a spot there and making the seeds. Again, you can hit it by itself, straight down, or you can actually lean it to emphasise a certain area. So. I might do the first one as a seed and then the rest I'll put on a bit of an angle. Just to sort of make them look a little bit more like seeds of a flower or stamen. And you can see before why I opted to just do that line as dots so you don't see haven't got a definite line there it sort of just fills in and makes a nice center of that flower okay so we're getting there if that flower is starting to make look a bit more like a flower Next one I'd like to introduce you to is our backgrounder. Um, basically, it's a very similar shape to the the pear shape, where it's, uh, but it's not oval. It's flat, and it's actually designed to um, go into areas um, and, as it says, give it a background. So let's give it a pattern in there. So you sort of start in the bigger areas, and it's got a um, a matted pattern on it and the shape of it helps in the fact that it, the pointed end can go into the, the grooves and it just sort of makes a little pattern area in the background sort of thing. You see that sort of bit of bit messy in there. So I've got another vein. I call it a vein of stop. This one, as you can see, is very similar in shape, but it's that it's smooth on both sides. And it can be used to stop off lines like that. Again, on an angle just sort of stops off the line and gives it a bit of definition there and then what else 
I have one here called a mule's foot. Called a mule's foot because, as you can see, it's very much the same shape as a mule's foot. Um, you can get them like this one, which is patterned, and again, you can also get them flat. Um, I don't think I've got a flat one. It's got two different sizes of um, a patterned one. And again, for emphasizing joins and what have you, so maybe just here, I'm going to put some decorations in, make it a little bit more like a, a flower. So we're getting closer. Okay, almost finished with my flower here. Um, the swivel knife itself is not just for you know cutting in the the pattern. Um, you can actually use your swivel knife to also make some decorative uh, decorative cuts as well. So back on my swivel knife again, give it a little bit of a strop just to make sure it makes nice clean cuts. And then we can just sort of find some areas here that can do a little bit more of a so you can actually start in heavy and drag it through and, and lighten off the uh, emphasizing the lines. Again here we'll do the same sort of thing. So maybe inside these leaves here we might want to um, start off here and just do an in in a, in a cut. Same with this one. Maybe we want to do a little bit of decoration in, in the, um, the stem itself. Just give it some character there. Maybe some marks maybe a line around here you get the idea So that's majority of the tools we can use. Um, there is another one um, I'd like to introduce you to just the end off. Let it be a little, a little dry there, so you can give it a little bit more of a squish. Again, this bottom corner here, I might just show you. Um, There's a basket uh, basket weave tool, which uh, is quite a funny shape looking tool there. And how it works is um, probably the best way to do it is get a little ruler and just draw a, a very faint line, um, just as a guideline. So you only just see it. And then if you start with your tool, um, on one side of the line, I make, a, I make an imprint, and you see it sort of makes a, a bit of a basket weavy looking thing. On the, get the tool again, and they go on the other side of the line and overlap that corner or this corner. All right, and then again, do the same thing. Back on the other side of the line, putting that slot in there, and you see, as we go along, it starts to give the impression of basket weave. 
Alright, so you just keep going along. Overlapping each impression with the last. And then if you want, you can go down to the next level. And where that one was there, go down to this one. Put that one in the corner there. continue on and then you sort of get like uh, the impressions of a basket weave. But you know, it's this camera as well. I mean it might take a while for actually do but um, after a while um, you can get a whole piece looking like it's been woven um, in basket weave. Um, so that's the introduction to some of my tools. Um, as you can see you get a fairly nice simple pattern um, it probably needs a little bit more work, um, but uh, there's my flower. Um, I'm going on from this, so I'm going to actually, I've actually made a few uh, different uh, projects using my tools. Uh, I might show uh, a few photographs at the end of this session of things I have made using the tools and things I've carved. And you can see, you know, it's not just simple flowers, you can, you can get quite elaborate. Um, uh, so we'll go from there. So I hope that's sort of um, been a good introduction to using the tools. I will be using them a bit further on um, with some of the projects coming up. Um, so yeah, if you like what you see, hit subscribe, um, hit like, tell your friends, come follow along. So see you next time. Uru.